My name is Richard Lombardi and I'm a cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma on January 15th, 2009 is when my doctor called me to tell me that I had cancer. If you remember back on January 15th, 2009, it was a day that Captain Sully landed that plane on the Hudson River after taking off from a local airport in New York and uh, was a hero for saving so many lives. Uh, after getting the diagnosis, everyone, I think, I believe, everyone becomes frightened that they're going to die. Cancer, the big C, as some people call it, <clears throat> is uh, a death sentence for many people. <clears throat> I was uh, a lucky one. I had a good doctor. I had a good oncologist. They prescribed the drugs that I needed for chemotherapy. And uh, although the chemotherapy took its toll on my body, I was able to uh, eventually come out the other end free of cancer. When I found out that I was going to survive, I decided to take the knowledge I had in food preparation and in uh, doing the cooking shows that I had been doing around the country and uh, put that on a website. Hopefully that would be entertaining and informative for other people who had cancer, not only cancer patients, but cancer survivors, cancer caregivers, and anyone interested in the information. I want to thank Melissa's for inviting me here. Um, to do a demonstration of a couple of the recipes in my book and to tell you all a little bit about the book. Uh, the book is Cooking Through Cancer. Uh, it's, of course, available at all the places books are. Uh, Amazon does give a good discount. And... Uh, the book was written to try to reach more people than I could reach on the internet because some people just don't use the internet. It's still maybe a little challenging for them. I'd like to move ahead here and uh, first show you a couple of pictures of some of the shows we did here. Uh, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, of course. Uh, uh, this one is uh, uh, television personality Tanya Meme. Uh, doing a little cooking demonstration. Uh, but two things I needed to tell you about were, number one, in the back of the book we have a, a section on kids, things kids love to eat. So they cook the uh, cancer-fighting chef way. Then I talk about some helpful hints. One of the helpful hints that's there talks about uh, 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 being safe with uh, knives. In fact, uh, if you have a, a soapy sink and you want to uh, put a knife in under the soapy water so that you can't see it. That's, uh, that's a little dangerous. So what I would suggest you do is don't put the knives under soapy water. Uh, and as far as washing the knife is concerned, if you try to wash it while you're holding it up and have that blade pointing to you or away from you, it's a little dangerous. So the way I wash blades like that is I, uh, I take the, uh, blade, lay it against the side of the sink, and then scrub both sides, rinse it off, and it's done. Well, now we're going to move along to our first cooking demonstration. Uh, you see here a picture uh, at a show that I did with Mark DiCarlo, who is a television host and podcast host. The young lady in the picture also did that particular show with us. Her name is Marissa Petraro. 
and you've probably seen her without even knowing it. If you ever watch Deal or No Deal, uh, she was the young lady that would open up the valise number 24 uh, on Deal or No Deal. She uh, uh, did that for a few years and has been in a bunch of other movies and stuff. Anyway, we're about ready to start with our first demonstration, which is going to be done with Mark uh, DiCarlo. Enjoy it. Well, we're here with Mark DiCarlo, who has a recipe in our uh, book, Cooking Through Cancer. And um, Mark is a, a, a TV and a, a podcast personality. Uh, he, uh, he'll he tell you about a couple of shows he does. Uh, and uh, I want to introduce him because we want to get cooking. So, Mark, please come in here and start. All right, Chef, good to see you again. Well, good You're to looking see you. good. Good to see thank you. Him. Thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. We are making guacamole a la Cancun. This is one of the uh, recipes I learned uh, while I was doing my show Taste of America for the Travel Channel. Um, every place that you go, people uh, historically cook what they find around them. Absolutely. You know, in Italy it's tomatoes and cheese and goat and stuff like that. In the Yucatan you've got citrus because it's a perfect place to grow citrus. Uh, avocado is a citrus. Uh, you also have Gulf shrimp from the Gulf of Mexico. Right. So that's the protein that we're going to add to this, uh, hopefully, delicious guacamole. Yeah, and don't forget Cancun. Cancun, <laughs> yes. Delicious. A lot of good food down there. So this, And we're not going to make it too spicy. You could always add extra jalapeno if you want to really kick it up a notch, but we're going to make it so that everyone can enjoy it. We start with a pound of boiled shrimp, gulf shrimp. You dice it up, uh, mix it up here with some extra virgin olive oil, a little balsamic, a little, uh, little cilantro, and a little garlic, um, minced garlic and oil. You mix that all together and you let it sit for a little bit. You do that first. Let the, uh, let the shrimp and the absorb all the delicious mm -hmm. olive oil. I have, to, I have to tell you, Mark, I don't like my shrimp too small. I right. like to have a chunk of shrimp to bite into. Right. So I don't make a small dice on something like that. I leave them kind of a good size. Yeah, because as you're eating the guacamole, you're looking forward to that shrimp. And if it's just a little sliver, yeah. you're disappointing yeah. people, Chef. <clears throat> yeah, by the way, I've had shrimp all my life. You know, my dad uh, drove a truck and delivered for a shellfish company. Really? A, a very high-end... This is on the East Coast? Uh, in New York. Very high-end shellfish. Uh-huh. And... Uh, uh, the shellfish were high-end or the customers were high-end? Both. Okay. <laughs> The customers paid a, a premium for the shellfish that his company delivered. Mm -hmm. and uh, we got a beautiful heirloom tomato here. We dice this up. This also goes into the uh, into the guac. Now this is a product from Melissa's, who uh, who uh, uh, are sponsoring this whole event, and uh, they uh, sent over a couple of gorgeous, aren't they? Absolutely gorgeous um, heirloom tomatoes. Uh, let me finish my sh my my. Tell me your shellfish story. story. My shellfish story. So my father would deliver to all of the best places in New York, the Waldorf Astoria, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And during the summer, when I was a kid and you know 13, 14 years old, I'd want to go to work with my dad sure. on the truck. So I would uh, I would get up at five o'clock in the morning. Here's your first mistake. And, and leave by five thirty. Walk from our house uh, five blocks over right next to the Yankee Stadium. Mm -hmm. and the original Yankee the Stadium. The original Yankee Stadium. And get on the, uh, get on the train and head down to uh, Brooklyn Bridge Stop. Uh, and he would pick up his truck at the garage and drive over to, uh, to his place and he'd load up the truck uh, with, with downtown deliveries. So he would only deliver four or five downtown places, mm -hmm. uh, Delmonico's and the Stork Club, uh, the uh, uh, Stock Exchange Club, and so on and so forth. So these are super high end oh, places. Oh yes, yes. And then and then he go back to the shop, load up again, and go up uptown deliveries. And and then he'd always ask me, "Where do you want to eat today?" <laughs> and and I would say, "What's the choices?" He said, "Well, how about if we schedule." 12 o'clock at the Waldorf Astoria. Smart dad. I said, great. So we headed over to the Waldorf at noon, 
And because the high-end shellfish my dad delivered had to be checked by the chef, the executive chef from the Waldorf Astoria would always come out and greet him. Bill, how you doing? Great, great. Uh, I wanted you to check all the stuff, Bash. And he said, okay, who's this? This is my son. He came to work with me today. Oh, really? You know, it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> Oh, no, we couldn't. We couldn't. Oh, you must eat with us. Oh, okay. Would you like uh, something for lunch, you and your boy? And I'd say, oh, sure, why not? You know? And uh, we would then, we would then, uh, he would sit us down at a table in the kitchen. The chef's table. At in the, the Waldorf. Wow. And we, would, and we would eat lunch. He would have the, uh, one of the sous chefs bring over some lunch for us. Oh. You know? So uh, what a great memory! So that 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 was uh, an experience, okay. And how old were you? I was 12, 13. And did you get that you were at? I mean, was it a big deal to you, or it was just lunch? Uh, half and half. Okay. Okay. It wasn't wasn't so much of a big deal, but it was yeah. uh, half and half, and uh, and that was uh, you know that was kind of great. So uh, that makes it but, worthwhile but we, to get if, up at five in the morning. If I wanted Chinese food, he'd say. You want Chinese food? We're going to House of Chan at 12 o'clock. He said, I know the, house, the, the chef at House of Chan very well. So, so That's the one thing about this business. You, you never go hungry. No. It's a fraternity of uh, yeah. people who enjoy and understand the importance of food. All right, so now we've got... You got your... Uh, our avocados. Tomato all diced up. Mm -hmm. You got your avocados... Chopped in half, and the pits are gone. Pits are gone, so now I'm going to scoop all the meat scoop -o. into there. Some people cube the meat and throw it in. Uh, I don't like that. I, I prefer a creamier. A creamy one. Yeah, and if you cube it up, then you don't moosh it as much. Yeah. Uh, so Let me step over here and get a tool. Maybe I can help you a little all bit. All right, that's good. Right. Hop back in. This is a great uh, healthy snack uh, or um, side dish for a meal. We're also going to, for people that are on the keto plan, you don't need to have the chips. You can take a cucumber, which we'll do in a minute, and chop up that cucumber and you use that uh, as the chip to scoop this stuff out. Um, makes it even healthier. Great in the summer. By the way, Mark. I'm going to have to make a correction mm -hmm. because because uh, there's something that I am kind of insistent on. Okay. People use the word healthy, healthier. Right. You want a healthy meal? Oh, no. Meals cannot be healthy. Only living things can be healthy. You're right. So the term is healthful. healthful. We're going to have healthful food. Not a healthy food meal. Okay. Healthful food. See, you probably didn't know that. That's <laughs> well, why you're watching this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that you could say thank you to the nuns. Here. Take the top off. That's what I... Oh. Yeah, there you go. All right, we put a little salt in there. By the way, this is sea salt, as recommended by Mark. Because it's healthful. A little black pepper. Like a little black pepper to bring it out. Then we're going to put in... Our capers, give it a little salt, a little pop, right? And the rest of the onions. Okay, this is a delicious red onion. Again, Melissa sent over some beautiful red oh, onions. Oh, that smells so and good. And this is Melissa's own garlic. Mmm, smell that. Smell how good that is. Uh, do you like a lot of garlic or a little garlic? Uh, I personally don't like too much garlic. All right, then you, you, you decide. Well, let me just, let me just. You decide the garlic. I'm going to just, that's it. Okay. okay. Now, one of the things, though, is, is I, I want to say, as far as my cooking is concerned, I will use crushed or chopped garlic in a dish like this. Mm -hmm. But if I was to make a, a sautéed chicken, uh, I wouldn't put crushed garlic in it. I would take some whole cloves of garlic and brown them. Get a little brown olive oil. And a little olive oil. That way, when the person is eating, if they don't want to bite into garlic, they can take it out. Right. But with crushed garlic or chopped garlic, if you have that in a sauce, every bite you take has a little right, crunch a little of garlic. Bite to it. Yeah. 
I personally don't like that. Okay. And I don't do that with my cooking. But there we go. Uh, I, I, I love the, the garlic, but you're right. Plus, if you're going to brown the garlic, if you do want to eat it, you get that little mm. delicious, it's mm. like a... Um, Caramelized. Yes. It's like when they caramelize the onions and put them on top. And now it's just a matter of mixing this up. Um, Boy, that smells great. Doesn't it? Ooh. It's the garlic. It's the cilantro, the onion. And this is not going to be as green looking as you might be used to guacamoles because it is very helpful. We've got a lot of delicious ingredients in there. We could, it could use a little bit more avocado than we put in, but it's not necessary at all. You know, especially stuff like this, it's all to taste. By the way, the recipe only calls for two avocados, but do what you want, okay? Reci yeah. Recipes are not carved in stone. No. They, uh, they can be changed and altered uh, to suit what you're doing. And this is a recipe I learned down in uh, Playa del Carmen, Mexico, which is about an hour away from Tulum and an hour away from the big pyramids there in Mexico, right, right on the Gulf. So everything there is fresh and delicious, and they eat, this, they eat guacamole at every meal, basically. All right, how's that look? That looks great. All right, so then the last thing we want to add is our shrimp. Lots of shrimp. Boom. So that's been marinating for at least a couple hours. If you want to go crazy, you put it in there and let it soak up overnight. Then every bite of this. Mm, <laughs> this is making me so hungry. I haven't had this recipe in so long. Oh, look at that. Wow. All right, I think we're done. Okay. Let me get the bowl. All in. right, so now you can, you can use it with typical uh, tortilla chips. We're eating healthfully, so we're going to use just cucumber chips. Basically, it's just a delivery system to get the deliciousness into your mouth. The last thing you want to do before you eat it is to finish it off with a little bit of lime juice, which really pops the flavor of everything that's in there. And again, these are Melissa's limes. They're absolutely sensational. Look how fresh they are mm -hmm. and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, how, how great they smell. Wow. Yeah, you got to get a smell camera for next time <laughs> so that we can actually enjoy it. How that. about a scratch? <laughs> a scratch and sniff scratch lens? And sniff. That's coming. That's a 21st century invention. All right. Oops. Okay. Good? Oh, that is delicious. You know, while you're doing that, Mark, I just want to show another one of these uh, heirloom tomatoes that was sent over by Melissa's. Absolutely gorgeous. I know, they look like Frankenstein tomatoes oh. compared to regular ones, but the taste is ridiculous. They, yeah, they, they do it's taste so, so much full of... All right, and that's what it looks like. So it's not the green stuff you get in the plastic tins at your grocery store in the middle of winter. This is honest to goodness Yucatan guacamole. Let's uh, serve it up nice. Put it up nice in a bowl here. Mm. Well, we got enough for at least lunch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this could be, it's got protein in it, so it can be your, your main course at lunch or snack in the middle of the afternoon. Look at that. Oh, bene, bene. Is that great or what? No, wait, is. you know what? The only thing is we got to do this. Got to scoop it. Now you see that? Mm -hmm. mm. Nice job. You had one job. You had one job. <laughs> What's it need? I would put a little more salt. Okay. Again, using sea salt. Maybe a little more lime. The, uh, the flavor's not popping enough. It's not popping. You're right. All right. A little more lime. Good idea. Um, 
Boy, this is going to be so perfect. Everybody watching is going to be sick <laughs> that they didn't come and have some. All right, we're really going to eat that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay. And what the citrus does, the acid brings out the flavor of the protein, brings out the flavor of the avocado, makes everything more delicious. Yeah. By the way, uh, I want to I want to talk again about the fact that this is a, a book of cancer fighting recipes, uh, and and I'm not trying to tell you that eating this is fighting cancer that you might have, but what I'm telling you is that uh, if you stay away from the things that are bad for you, this will be something good to eat. Right. Okay. So we have to make it quick, easy, delicious. Good to eat, healthful for you, uh, not not let you eat anything that might damage your cells, not let you eat anything that might have a carcinogen effect. Which this does not. The meat was not uh, cooked. This has right. This, this has boiled. Mm, that's right, better. This has no problems. These are these. This is like a plant-based diet with something from the ocean. Right. Okay, so Ooh, that tastes pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'm have some more. I'm going again. Tell me if you like like it better or if it needs more. Mm. Very good. And if you really wanted to give it a punch, right. slice them up. Right, right. Mm. I'll tell you what my uncle used to say. <laughs> Lock it in. Well, thank you for uh, featuring well, this. So nice of you to come by. You're very welcome. This is super. Um, Again, helpful, fast. You saw how fast it was to do. People love it. It's a great snack. You're not eating, you know, processed chips right. and garbage. Right. This is healthy for you. Right. Um, right. Good kind of fat in and the avocado. And it's easy to eat. Okay. Right. You it's just not, use your mouth. Right. It's not difficult to eat. It's, you don't have to pull anything apart. Like or ribs. Like you don't want to go on a first date no. and have ribs. It's messy. <laughs> yeah, you don't right? want to go on any date. No, you don't because then you get yeah you you end up with the grease and, and sauce all over your clothes. Yeah. You don't want that. This very simple. Uh, we're of course we're eating it with spoons because we're on camera, but in the real world you don't have to. And that's what it looks like. Look mm -hmm. at that. Mm -hmm. Mm. Super. Mark, super job. Thank you so much. Grazie. Appreciate it. Take Congrats care. on the book. Thank you. Continued health. Well, we're going to move along pretty quickly to our next recipe. Uh, and uh, I uh, took the liberty of uh, slicing the onions and the zucchini, uh, sauteing them in a little butter and olive oil, and then adding uh, some tomato sauce and uh, if they're too dry a little bit of water and I'm cooking those uh, and I'm going to use those as a side dish for uh, pork tenderloin uh, this is what 12 ounces of pork tenderloin looks like uh, not not very big but probably uh, enough for two people when it's sliced uh, nicely and uh, I'd like to uh, clean it up a little bit by taking off some of the uh, 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 white uh, uh, gristle uh, that's there. Then we want to uh, take it and, uh, and season it and rub the seasoning in with uh, black pepper, some uh, garlic powder, and uh, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, salt. Uh, of course, we use the uh, kosher salt, as uh, we always do. Rub it in, rub it around, pick up whatever's on the cutting board, and uh, give it a nice coat. Not too much, because, uh, of course, the pepper, if a person uh, doesn't like the heat of the pepper, that's a, that's a problem. Uh, now we'll get our frying pan ready. Uh, we uh, use it. Uh, I, I I have this one on the top of an induction uh, uh, 
hot plate uh, because uh, it's real easy to work with uh, an induction hot plate. Uh, if you don't do it, you might want to give it a try. Um, we uh, basically uh, have to uh, put uh, the pan on a uh, on on the heat. Let the pan get hot first, then put your olive oil and uh, two tablespoons of butter. Uh, or a butter substitute uh, either would be fine once that's heated up and uh, has a little sizzle to it why well, we'll take the uh, pork uh, tenderloin and we'll lay it in there and uh, that should uh, should allow us to uh, brown it pretty good on uh, on all sides <clears throat> There goes the pork tenderloin uh, in the in the pan. Uh, it's uh, browning real nice. I could see it. I I actually know how this one turns out. So I have to tell you, it looks beautiful when it's finished. Anyway, uh, we're cooking. There we've turned it over and uh, <clears throat> getting ready to turn it again. And there it is. We want to keep it moving. Uh, we're going to cook the outside. Uh, and and uh, uh, the finish for the inside is going to be in the oven, which we are preheating to 350 degrees right now. So uh, we're going to uh, keep it going on the fire. And while we're doing that, I want to tell you that this is one of the recipes that we served at Mama Rose Restaurant. Uh, and... Uh, it was uh, uh, ordered an awful lot, and uh, it's one of the favorite recipes of my grandkids, uh, and uh, I make it for them when they come over. Anyway, as we uh, as we finish uh, frying, sautéing, uh, cooking this uh, nice piece of. Uh, pork tenderloin. Uh, I, I like pork tenderloin because uh, it's very tender but it's not fatty and uh, and uh, it uh, it isn't very expensive. It's a, it's a fairly reasonably priced piece of meat. It's easy to get uh, and uh, uh, is quite enjoyable when you're eating it. We're going to brown it on all sides here and then we'll uh, take it and we'll put it in the oven uh, to uh, finish it off for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. It looks like it's about ready to take out. I've turned off the uh, induction uh, cooker and uh, For the last couple of moments, I'm going to cover it, give it a chance to start cooking inside, and uh, maybe only for four or five minutes, and take it out uh, now and uh, get it ready for the oven. Okay, here we go into the little broiler pan, and we'll put it in the oven. While the uh, meat is in the oven... I will be making a, a little gravy uh, to uh, put over the meat and that's uh, pretty much done by uh, saving the drippings in the pan, uh, adding some uh, red wine, cooking wine, uh, and uh, there goes the cooking wine into the hot liquid. We're going to scrape up the uh, uh, drippings uh, that are in the pan. Uh, I uh, use either Wonder Flour, uh, which I think the recipe calls for. Well, this is a little cornstarch. Mix in with some chicken broth. Okay, and we'll, uh, we'll put that uh, right in the pan and continue stirring. 
uh, and uh, it'll thicken just a little bit. Of course, if it gets too thick, we could put a little more chicken broth in. If it uh, isn't thick enough, a little more uh, cornstarch. But uh, this one turns out turns out pretty good. Uh, and as you can see, it's uh, a nice uh, a nice sauce for the top of the pork. Okay, it's about time to take it off, put it in a little uh, bowl uh, that you can use a spoon to just scoop it out and over the, uh, the pork. So about now the uh, pork should be done and come out of the, uh, the oven. Oops, there it is. All right. There's our piece of pork. We're going to take the extra drippings from the pork while it was cooking in the oven and put it, mix it in with the, uh, the gravy that we have. Now we're going to slice the pork. This first slice I'm going to make is in the middle. And the reason for that is I want to see if it's done. If it wasn't done, I would put the pieces back in for a little bit. But this one looks perfect. It's nice and it has a little pinkish to it. And uh, we can slice it into uh, several slices, about a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, and uh, that would really make one serving for, uh, for someone. Uh, we'll uh, get the other piece uh, ready also because we're going to put them on a platter and put them on the table and let people take what they would like to take. Some people might only want two slices and some a little more. But uh, whatever the situation, we're going to get the platter and we'll uh, begin to put uh, the, uh, the pork on the platter and this is for serving. Okay, of course, in the restaurant, when you make it, you take those slices, you put them on the plate, you put the vegetable on, and you have the waitress, waiter, bring it out okay, to the, to the patron. Uh, here we have uh, uh, the gravy put, putting on there because we want you to see what it looks like. We're only going to take those pieces and put them on another plate. Uh, and we we do that. We take the pork, we put it on a plate, we go back to get that zucchini and onions with the little tomato sauce, and we put it in there. We're going to move right along to our next uh, recipe. Our next and last recipe is for stuffed mushrooms. The stuffed mushrooms are made by taking a package of breakfast sausage. In this case, we're using turkey breakfast sausage because it's a little more healthful than, uh, than the pork uh, breakfast sausage. We uh, cook it up until it's completely done. Uh, we drain off any of the fat that's remaining in the pan, and then we take a, uh, eight ounces of cream cheese, and we mix it with that uh, uh, sausage. And then we uh, get a spoon, and we take the caps off some medium mushrooms, and... Uh, stuff those mushrooms until they're uh, stuffed to the ceiling okay in other words you don't just put it inside the cap you leave it hang out over the top uh, in this case we're going to do a few mushrooms uh, but uh, if you're doing this uh, you might wind up doing a couple of dozen mushrooms uh, we're going to take those mushrooms put them in a preheated oven of 350 wait about 15 minutes and when they come out, you'll notice that there's some liquid in the bottom of the pan that's the water coming out of the mushrooms. Also, if you'd like to, you could let the top of that get a little golden brown. But in this case, uh, we, uh, we have the mushrooms cooked, 
and uh, we're ready uh, to serve. Now, uh, since you have so many mushrooms uh, normally, uh, uh, you would have a, a plate and you'd just fill it with the mushrooms that you've uh, taken out of the uh, oven. Uh, so in this, in this case, we're making a presentation of just putting our mushrooms on a platter, a little, a small plate, and uh, and we'll serve it that way to the uh, three or four people that this would serve. Two, three, four mushrooms uh, is pretty good uh, for an appetizer for anyone. Anyway, that's uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, now that we have completed all the recipes. I'd like to encourage everyone to try some of the recipes in the book. Uh, let me know um, if you have any questions or if there's anything about them that you question. Uh, you can always uh, reach me at uh, thecancerfightingchef.com. Just go to the website and uh, we'll be happy to uh, answer any of your questions. You can email me there. Thank you.